Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Using AI to Enhance Field Service Technicians' Productivity and Efficiency, brought to you by Technology and Services Industry Association and sponsored by ServiceNow. My name is Vanessa Lucero, and I'll be your moderator for today. I would now like to introduce our presenters today. John Ragsdale, Distinguished Researcher and VP Technology Ecosystems for TSIA. Bulent Sinarkara, VP and GM Field Service Management for ServiceNow. And Brian Philbin, Senior Advisory Solutions Consultant, Field Service Management, also with ServiceNow. As with all of our TSA webinars, we do have a lot of exciting content to cover in the next 45 minutes. So let's jump right in and get started. John, over to you. Well, thank you, Vanessa. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we all know that AI is one of the hottest topics out there today, and the potential for field service uh, is huge. And we're going to be talking today about some of the use cases for leveraging AI and even Gen AI uh, with your field service organization, the business impacts. And I think we're also going to touch on ultimately how this can affect uh, the customer experience and customer effort as well. So in the abstract for this web webinar, we teased up this idea of reactive, predictive, and proactive. And I think we all understand this. Um, unfortunately, many uh, field service teams are still in a very reactive mode. Uh, we have seen a big push toward predictive, which is seeing certain error codes that may indicate something. Uh, but with AI, uh, it's definitely going to allow us to be much more granular and pattern matching, predicting uh, what's going to happen and getting into a really more of a proactive mode that things are much more automated, uh, that we can detect things much earlier and ideally uh, prevent downtime entirely, have uh, parts shipped before a part even fails, uh, et cetera. So we're gonna be talking a lot today about predictive and proactive. I wanted to share a little data just to kind of set the stage. And I understand that service organizations aren't always the first in line for budget when it comes to things like AI, the first people in line uh, to get those data science resources. Uh, but luckily, as we're going to hear from our guest speakers today, there's increasingly more capabilities available off the shelf so this is no longer something that you have to build yourself. So uh, a few data points, uh, just about a quarter of uh, support and field service organizations are doing any experimenting with Gen AI. Uh, so definitely some big opportunities there. Uh, for uh, many years, we talked about, uh, wouldn't it be great if we could build self-healing properties into technology, which again would take a pretty healthy healthy dose of artificial intelligence. Uh, currently only 0.3 incidents are resolved through self-help. And you know, I think one of the issues there is development priorities are often set by the sales organization uh, or maybe you know, customers clamoring about bugs and enhancements and not always taking uh, prioritized input from the service organizations on what the impact to some extra development dollars could be for them. Uh, and finally, uh, just under 6% of incidents are resolved by diagnostics embedded uh, in the product. So we know that there's a lot more abilities today for accessing and monitoring remote equipment. Uh, so again, with more AI uh, capabilities to analyze that, Hopefully that number will continue to go up. For the pace setters, this is from a recent survey we did on uh, IoT and connectivity. And we see that for the companies that have adopted some AI to look at remote logs and monitor remote systems, some really big business impacts, 26% improvement in resolution time and a reduction of 76% uh, in overall resolution time. So uh, some really big business impacts that are available, but you gotta pull the trigger. So uh, the majority of companies say that the top use case for remote telemetry 
is analytics. And we're gonna, again, be talking about the role of AI today. It's one thing to access that customer equipment to do some reactive problem solving, but the more data we can access and the more sophisticated the analytics become, uh, the smarter we're going to be about moving into that proactive and predictive state. And the final piece of data I wanted to share, we just completed our 2023 technology stack surveys. Uh, this is the first of this data that's been uh, viewed publicly. I just sent the results to the research organization yesterday. So I'll be publishing uh, a report a little bit later this year that summarizes some of the findings. But this is looking at the planned spending around some of these more sophisticated capabilities for field service. AI and trouble, uh, AI enabled troubleshooting. Uh, two thirds of companies had budget for that this year, 43% next year. Uh, installed bait at asset device management, which is not only intelligently understanding what's on site uh, with each customer, but can also be getting into some adoption consumption information. Uh, about half of companies were budgeting for tools this year. Remote assistance technology, we used to think of that as you know, remote control and screen sharing, but it's taking on uh, a lot more meaning today with intelligence monitoring what's going on uh, in remote systems. 68% of companies uh, had budget for that this year. And finally, work assistance technology. And this is a category that TSI uses that includes uh, Gen AI and productivity enhancement uh, capabilities such as Gen AI for field techs. And 40% of companies have budget for that this year, 45% next year. So hopefully we'll see that 27% who are currently investigating uh, start to go up a little bit more. So uh, enough for me, I wanna bring our guest speakers uh, into the conversation. And I wanna start with Bulent, who is Vice President and GM of Field Service Management for ServiceNow. Uh, Boulette, I know that you are dealing with field service organizations every day. Um, how do you see AI playing a role in the services industry? And what are some of the business drivers and initiatives uh, affecting field service? 